This video will demonstrate how a titration is performed and go through some of the basic procedures and things to watch out for for students performing labs like this. And so we're going to be titrating KHP or potassium acid phthalate with potassium hydroxide and I've written down the chemical equation here. Don't let it scare you too much. This thing here is just an acid. That's our KHP. Here's our potassium hydroxide, a strong base. And here's what results from the neutralization reaction. And so our goal here is to find the unknown concentration of the potassium hydroxide solution. So it's taking a hydrogen off the acid, reacting with the hydroxide to neutralize into water. And we should know a volume and a concentration here and a volume here to be able to do our stoichiometry. So let's see how that's going to work. So I have prepared our potassium hydroxide solution in advance. I made it from crystals. And you might be wondering why I didn't just prepare it with an exact concentration to start with if I really want to know the concentration. Um, we've done that before. If I weigh out a very precise amount of crystal and I dissolve it in a precise amount of water, I can know the concentration. However, potassium hydroxide and several other solutions work the same way. Is has a special property and it's called hygroscopic. What that means is that these crystals will absorb water from the air. And so their mass, we can't be certain that it's all comprised of potassium hydroxide molecules. There's some water molecules in there depending on how long it's been exposed to air. So what I did was I dissolved 8.42 grams of potassium hydroxide pellets in about a liter of water, which should get us, assuming it was all potassium hydroxide, should get us about 0 0.15 moles per liter. But again, I don't know if that 8.42 grams was all potassium hydroxide or if there was some water in there. So that's the purpose of this lab in figuring out the concentration of the potassium hydroxide. And we call that standardization. So we're standardizing the potassium hydroxide. In other words, we're finding out its precise concentration so that we would be able to use it in a future lab titrating with other things once we know its concentration exactly. So this potassium hydroxide will react with KHP, our potassium acid phthalate, and we need to know the precise concentration of this. Right? If we look at our balanced chemical equation, we will have one unknown concentration. That means the other concentration needs to be precisely known. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare a precise concentration of potassium acid phthalate. So let's figure out how much KHP will have to dissolve in water in order to make the desired solution. So potassium acid phthalate or potassium hydrogen phthalate is abbreviated KHP to make our life easier. And we would like our KHP solution to be 0 0.15 moles per liter. And so first of all, we need to make that solution and we need to make it with a precise concentration. So how much are we going to have to dissolve in water of those crystals in order to make that? Well, we would like to make a 0 0.15 mole per liter solution. And we want to make 100 mils of that, so 0 0.100 liters. And I'll just give you the molar mass of KHP. It's 204.23 grams in one mole. And so if we do that calculation, we can figure out how much KHP we need to dissolve in 100 mils in order to make a 0 0.15 mole per liter solution. And that number should be 3.06 grams of KHP. All right, so let's make our standard solution of KHP. We will have to dissolve our 3.06 grams in exactly 100 mils of water. So we will weigh out 3.06 grams first, dissolve it in about 50 mils or so, pour it into our volumetric flask so that we can get a very precise measurement of 100 milliliters. Okay, so we'll start with zeroing our beaker on the scale. All right, and then we can add 3.06 grams into our beaker. 
So there we have 3.06 grams. Just make sure there's none on our scale anywhere. And still 3.06. So that will be the correct amount. Unfortunately, we have a little bit of static going on here, so we're gonna have to rinse down the sides of our beaker and hopefully it's all contained in our beaker. Uh, but that's definitely something to note in our observations that uh, we've got quite a lot of static here. So if there would happen to be some particles that were clinging to the outside of the beaker, of course, those we can include in our solution. So that will affect our ability to make this very precise. So now I'm going to dissolve this in about 50 mils of water. And I'm going to make sure it's all dissolved. I don't want any crystals left on the side of my beaker. Okay, so our crystals look dissolved now. I actually snuck it on the hot plate while you weren't looking. It was uh, pretty hard to dissolve. So let's pour this into our volumetric flask. And I'm gonna pour down the stirring rod so that I don't spill any. and everything has to be rinsed. So the accuracy of this solution depends on a couple of things. It depends on our equipment being able to weigh accurately. It depends on our ability to transfer every single molecule that we weighed into our volumetric flask here. So that means we rinse the beaker it means we rinse the beaker again because we need every single molecule of KHP in here or we don't have 0 0.15 moles per liter. And if we don't have that, then our standardization is not gonna do us much good. All right, so everything rinsed out and then we top it up to the line. We're gonna do the last little bit with an eyedropper. And a few drops on the neck here, I'm trying to flick down. And we've got exactly the bottom of our meniscus on the line. So stopper that, inverts to make sure this is evenly mixed. And this is our zero point one five mole per liter solution of KHP, which will be the acid in our titration.